On this table, I have everything you need to start faceting gemstones for under $500. A Vivor faceting machine, our cut kit one, WD-40, an alcohol lamp, paper towels, and two buckets. Let's have a closer look and get it set up. We'll start with the Vivor faceting machine, which is currently available for about $260 on their website and on eBay, or for a little bit more on Amazon. It's this exact model. Look for the vertical control panel. Not this one, 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 definitely not this one. Quick note, I'm not affiliated with Vivor and I don't get any cut of sales and all eight test machines were bought at normal price on eBay. I recommend their machine because it has several important fixes and improvements over the similar looking generic models sold by a million other sellers. I think they may have seen this excellent video by Patrick Donahue about an older model and taken a lot of it to heart. So thanks Patrick, I think you made a real difference. So let's get it unboxed, show off what comes with it, what's wrong with it, and how to get it working. These are packed really well with custom styrofoam inserts. It's honestly amazing it can be made and shipped for this price. Inside are the polishing base, the vertical mast, the split nut for height adjustment, the handpiece holder, handpiece, cutting lap, master lap, water pump, power cord, nozzle, and parts bag. The base is about 16 by 8 by 7 and a half inches and takes 6 inch laps. Here we have the splash guard. Water goes out here, so you put one bucket under that, obviously. And once it's plugged in, we can turn on the master switch here. And then the LED gooseneck has its own switch. And the control panel here lets you turn on the motor, change its speed, and change its direction. Note that the controller is a little laggy, so it takes a moment for the speed to actually adjust after you turn the knob. Next, we install the master lap on the base. Sometimes it's a very tight fit, but that's okay. Just give it a little more pressure. But if it still won't go on, you can gently use the 600 grit sandpaper that's included in your kit to remove burrs and open it up just a little bit. The machine also comes with one cutting lap, either 1000 or 600 grit. These toppers go on top of the master lap, then the washer and nut hold them down. The nozzle and pump are attached using the included hose and clamps, and then the nozzle sticks to a magnet on the base here. You'll typically just need a steady drip, so you'll probably want to turn this knob on the pump to less, and even then you'll probably barely open the nozzle. And the pump goes in the other bucket for your water inflow. The machine also comes with a couple dops, one 6mm flat dop and one larger V dop, plus the table adapter dop assembly. This is how the original mast is assembled using the bolt, washer, and nut from the bag to fix it to the base. Then the split nut, handpiece holder, and handpiece are put on. Note we've run into one machine where the split nut had some burrs and would not go under the mast smoothly. If so, just lightly sand the inside of the nut until it fits. Now this is where we run into the major design flaw of the machine. As made, there's no way to put the dop horizontal to cut a girdle or outline of a stone. The height adjusting split nut is way too tall, but if you take that off, there's no way to adjust the height. We remove this mast entirely and replace it with our custom cut kit mast. This custom machine base sits lower and flatter and has its own built-in height adjustment nut. When you want to cut a girdle, you remove the split nut and the handpiece sits directly on the smaller thumb nut. Then to adjust the height, you just rotate it to move up or down. Once your girdle's cut, you just put the split nut back on and you're good to go. At this point, spray some WD-40 on one of these paper towels and rub it on the inside of this thumb nut. This will keep it from binding on the bolt and let it grip the base tighter. The splash guard actually has a cutout for faceting girdles, and it has a really well-made insert that fits perfectly, but it's really easy to lose. So we include a sliding guard in the kit as well. Just move it to the side when you cut your girdle and back when you're done. Even with the splash guard, this machine does spray some water when run at full speed, so make sure you use it somewhere that doesn't mind a little liquid and that you can wipe down to remove any stray gem dust. You may notice that the lap is higher on one side than the other by about a millimeter. It's not ideal, but it's not enough to prevent faceting, and it's much improved from previous models. Next, we have a couple of nut and bolt replacements with the cut kit. This top knob looks nice, but it isn't functional. It actually hits the handpiece when you try to adjust the height. Unscrew it and thread this bolt in instead. Next is the long nut that holds the cheater in place. This is just uncomfortable to use. Remove it, which might require pliers since they sometimes over torque it, and replace it with this nice thumb nut. While you're there, rotate the cheater so it's centered, and use the included sharpie to mark whatever groove is right in the middle. This will give a visual reference for using the cheater. And make sure the nut is finger tight when you're done. Now take a look at the index gear here. Make sure the cuts go to sharp points and the indexer sits tightly in them. We ran into one machine where the index gear was cut wrong, and it allowed a lot of wiggle room, which is not great. Vivor actually did give us a partial refund to cover buying a new gear, but it takes a little while for them to come in. So I bought a bunch of extras. If you get a cut kit and your Vivor machine has a bad index gear, just send us an email with a picture and we'll send you a good one. While you're looking at the gear, you might also want to mark the major angles a little more boldly with your Sharpie. It can help a bit when you're starting out. Now let's fix the table adapter. It's used for cutting the flat top or table of your gemstone. The first issue is this set screw, which would require an Allen wrench to use that isn't even included. Just unthread that and substitute this nice thumb screw from the bolt set. The second possible issue is that on two of the machines we've handled, this flat reference top didn't even fit into the adapter. But if that happens, don't worry, we've provided an extra in your kit. Now let's have a look at what else comes in the kit. Two pairs of dops, a stick of dop wax, a dop holder, stone tongs, a transfer jig, two cutting laps, 240 and 600 grit, two copper polishing laps, and two sticks of gear loose diamond compound. 8,000 grit for pre-polish and 60,000 for final polish. Along with bags to store the laps in, one piece of Lab Ruby for charging your copper laps, and last but not least, three pieces of laser Yag facet rough to get started on. Yag is one of the easiest materials to cut and has excellent brilliance and durability, so your first stone can be a stunner. We'll get into how to actually use all of this in the next 
next video. Now your machine is all set up and you have everything you need to make some beautiful gems. Now is this the best machine out there? No, but it's actually pretty good, and I think it's a great way to get started. Cutting on it reminds me a lot of the old refurbished machine that I learned on. My faceting mentors told me it was a good idea to learn on a more basic machine. That way I would pretty quickly learn about a variety of issues and how to fix them. And once I could cut on it, I could cut on anything. So it may not be an Ultratech or a Facet or a Facetron, but starting out this way worked really well for me, and I hope other people can have a similar experience. Plus, $500 doesn't get you very far on a high-end faceting machine, even if you buy used. One other quick note, I always wear a respirator when I cut. Most faceters don't, but I figure it's better safe than sorry, but I'm not an expert and this is not financial advice. Now that everything's set up, we can move on to cutting our first stone. And in the next video, I give a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to cut a stone on this exact system.